Welcome to the Chelsea Fans Channel. Here are the five things that we've learnt from this week's action. Point one is Conte's tactics. Antonio Conte has developed this system at Chelsea that really is a beautiful thing. I think that the sign of a brilliant manager, the sign and the hallmark of a top, top manager is being able to identify and react to problems on the pitch. What happened at Arsenal was a terrible thing. You know, I was there, it was awful, it was painful, uh, it was a tragic sight and we were humiliated and well beaten by a very good Arsenal team. Who would have thought that that day would be a catalyst for Conte to try out this new system, get it perfected over the international break, and then go on to, you know, we haven't conceded a goal now for three games. We've won 2-0, 3-0, 4-0. Don't know what that means for Southampton, but uh, fingers crossed it could mean a five. I just think that Conte really does deserve some credit here. Not only does he use, you know, he's done it, he's, he's brought in this system and it's very, very impressive, but he's done it against perhaps lesser teams. Leicester were resting players, weirdly, thinking of Europe. Hull, you know, no great shakes. This was against Manchester United. This was against a former best manager in the world. That really is massive. And I think that Antonio Conte really does do it better. And he deserves full credit for this because it takes a very, very brave man to implement a completely new system with a, a reshaped back line. You know, you're moving players, you're juggling players. Aspilicueta is used to playing as a fullback. He's now playing as a third centre half. Antonio Conte deserves nothing but praise here because it really, really is just such a great thing that he's done by completely revolutionising our system. You know, Chelsea have played in the previous system, the sort of Christmas tree shape, for what, the best part of a decade? And it was a system that had served us very well. You know, we won back-to-back -back league titles in it. But the game has moved on, and with it, Antonio Conte's tactics are now pioneering. Don't be surprised to see other managers emulating this system. Point two is fullbacks. Now, this is something I'm going to enjoy. I really want to talk to you about this, and I want your thoughts on it. But... I think that we just need to take a moment to appreciate quite how good Marcus Alonso and Victor Moses has been. Let's not forget how difficult this position is to play. I don't know how many of you play Sunday League or you know even a, a better level than that. I do, and I always find it very funny when a new manager will come in and say, right, lads, we're playing with wing-backs. You go, yeah, yeah, all right. One of you will go wing-back. You, you bomb forward once. You're knackered. It's such a difficult position to play. If when you're defending, you need to be on your far post or near post, depending on where the ball's coming from. Equally... When you're attacking, you need to be in exactly the same position. It's very, very difficult. And the players that we've brought in, the way that Antonio Conte has brought in Victor Moses and converted him into this fantastic wing-back is just a testament to the man, but also to Victor Moses. Victor Moses is you know, a shining example of what can happen on a loan system. Nobody deserves this more than him. He's been off to Stoke. It wasn't a great move for him. He's been to West Ham, an even worse move for him. And he was at Liverpool. And he has served his time in the Premier League. He deserves this run of games, and he is grabbing it with both hands. He has looked sensational at that in that position. Equally, Marcus Alonso. Let's remember, Marcus Alonso and Victor Moses are both players who, in their careers, have been frozen out by Jose Mourinho. So the fact that they both played so well against him should irk our former manager. You know, Marcus Alonso at Real Madrid wasn't given a chance by Mourinho. Equally, Victor Moses, when he was at Chelsea, wasn't given a chance. Those two players, I think, this is a bold statement from me, but I think there's some truth in it. I would say that if you were to pinpoint quite how our form has turned so, so brilliantly since the game against Arsenal, it would be because of this new system, and in particular the performances that Marcus Alonso and Victor Moses have been putting in. Number three is a point I am relishing making. It's, of course, David Luiz. David Luiz hasn't put a foot wrong since he rejoined us. He has been fantastic. Even in the games where it didn't go well, you know, I was at his debut in Swansea. It was a shame. I think we were robbed that day, a foul on Cahill, but irrespective, you know, we, we dropped points. Equally, Arsenal equally, Liverpool. David Luiz has come into a side that... He came into a side that was struggling. It wasn't, it wasn't a good position for him to come into. He joined, things started going wrong. He, though, hasn't put a foot wrong. He has looked fantastic. And in this new system, he has taken it on. He has taken the responsibility. Although Gary Cahill is a captain, you will see that David Luiz takes his fair share of the responsibility to marshal that back line. Combine that, combine his defensive nous, his defensive know-how and his experience with his ability to spot a long ball, spot a clear pass, hit a wonderful free kick. You know, he's been very unlucky not to score. I think that we deserve to take a moment here and these five things that we've learned and just appreciate quite what a great signing David Luiz has been and what a wonderful servant for Chelsea Football Club he has been over both spells. Remember, we called this one on the Chelsea Fans Channel. We'll love David Luiz forever. Number four, and it's more good news, this just fills me with joy as well. It's the relationship between players and fans. I think the disparity between players and fans last season 
Uh, it's never been bigger. Chelsea fans felt incredibly alienated from the people that we idolise, and it was awful. It, you know, sometimes we would go to Stamford Bridge, and it felt poisonous. You know, and I imagine the players felt the same. That's history, and Antonio Conte deserves a lot of credit here, but so do the players themselves. What a wonderful sight it was to see Pedro score after what thirty seconds and dive headfirst into the Matthew Harding layer. Well worth a booking, pathetic booking, but you know, well worth it. I just love to see players feeling the same passion that we do from the stands. You know, it's been a long time since we felt like that, but can you imagine how Pedro felt about this? We hijacked his move, you know, he was off to Manchester United, we hijacked it. They felt like they had the last laugh. You know, Pedro hasn't covered himself in glory since the move. Then bang, 30 seconds into the game, he puts us 1-0 up with a very, very astute finish. It was just lovely to see. And Courtois, who's also had his fair share of issues with the fans, he was in the crowd. And it's just brilliant to see that the fans and the players are all fighting for the same thing. And long may it continue. Number five. Now, some people have warned me about saying this one, but do you know what? They've scribbled it out from my cue card, but I don't care. I'm saying it anyway. We are contenders for the Premier League. I didn't think it was possible before the season started. You know, we would be turning a 10th place finish into potential title winners. Huge. But the table has taken shape now. We are nine games in. People look at the Premier League table and the shape that it's in now will be a good indicator as to how it will eventually finish. There is no reason why we cannot win the Premier League. We are a point off top, having already lost to two of our rivals. Now, if you said to me after the Arsenal game that in a few games time we will be one point off top, I would have laughed you out of the room. I really do think that if we're all pulling in the right direction, the others, you know, your Tottenham's, your Manchester City's, they are going to have the distraction of the Champions League and we know how difficult that is. There is no reason why this team cannot win the Premier League. Let's believe, let's keep, you know, fighting and let's get down to Southampton on the weekend and get three points. All right, guys, welcome to the Chelsea Fans Channel. This is my post-match review where Chelsea have just won against Manchester United at the bridge 4-0. Uh, 